anyone not familiar with our cruising area, we are located in the Pacific Northwest near Vancouver and Seattle, on the southern tip of Vancouver Island. The Southern Gulf Islands is located between the Southern Strait of Georgia and the Strait of Juan de Fuca. This collection of islands and passages is where we spend most of our year cruising. On this video, we're gonna talk about our five favorite anchorages to go to in the Southern Gulf Islands. These aren't necessarily the absolute best anchorages for everybody, but keep in mind that we do work full time and often we like to be able to get out after work on a Friday night and go out for a night or two on the weekend and not spend all our time getting to an anchorage. And with our home port being Sydney, these are places that for us we can get to fairly quick, um, you know, even on a Friday night in winter time. But I'm sure everybody can enjoy them. One of our favorite anchorages, um, of course, is Portland Island. And what's nice with Portland is, for us, coming from our marina in Sydney, it's about a 45 minute run to Portland Island. So again, on a Friday night, we can get there quickly. Uh, Portland has two anchorages, uh, Princess Bay on the south end and Royal Cove on the north end. Royal Cove is quite small and it's more uh, exposed to the, I guess, northwest, north? Yeah, a little bit north, northwest. Yeah. Yep. And there is a small dock there, a dinghy dock, so uh, if you want to go to shore from there with your dinghy, you can. Um, there's lots of trails throughout the island that go around the whole island and up through the middle of the island. Uh, Princess Bay, there's lots of room for anchoring there. There is a dock, but it's only there from May till uh, September. So again, if you have dogs or whatever, you want to go to shore, you're going to have to just take your dinghy and go to the beach because uh, there's no dock off season. Princess Bay is very exposed to the southeasterly, so if it's blowing from the southeasterly, that's probably not where you want to be. Mm -hmm. And in general, um, our favorite place is Princess Bay, but it's mainly for uh, weekends where you do have more of a northwest uh, wind or a very settled condition. Not recommended on any southeasterly wind. No. It, just, it just becomes too, too much of a swell. Um, well, the only other thing is, uh, depending on the route of the ferries going to Vancouver, you do end up sometimes getting a little bit of ferry wash coming in there, but it's mostly tolerable and there is stern tying, excellent holding and it's fairly shallow. Yeah. Um, good for power boats, the sailboat's got to go out a little bit further because uh, probably at low tides their keels might yeah. end up touching the mud, but uh, really good holding and overall definitely one of our favorites. Yep, yeah. and there's a beautiful beach here too. Yep. Yeah. So that's probably it for Portland Island. favorite anchorage we'd like to talk about is Russell Island. So Russell Island for us takes about an hour uh, from our marina. Uh, Russell is great protection from a southeasterly. Um, it's a smaller island but there is trails all around the island. Uh, there's a dock that's there year-round which is a nice perk. Um, you get a bit of wash from the ferry that goes to Salt Spring Island there and sometimes some of the boat traffic that goes by there might be a bit of wash but it's not very often. Uh, with with uh, Russell Island, um, quite often especially in the, uh, in the short hours of the winter time, uh, we might go to Russell Island or we might go to um, Princess Bay on Portland Island. Um, because one is good in southeast and one is not, it kind of always gives you um, a pretty good option there. There's a great network of trails around Russell Island and there's an interesting Hawaiian history uh, from people who migrated from Hawaii to Russell Island uh, back in, what was it, early 1900s I guess. Yeah. And uh, it's a neat place to explore and uh, there's a dock there all year round so if you have to take a dog to shore or anything like that or want to just be able to take a dinghy and be able to tie up, it's an excellent spot. Thank you. 
The next anchorage that is one of our favorites is Bedwell Harbor on, between South Pender and North Pender Island. Yeah, so what we like about Bedwell is, again, it's another one that's close to Sydney for us. It doesn't take us very long to get there. Um, it's a fairly big anchorage. Uh, you can anchor, or there's also some uh, parks marine balls as well that you can tie up to for a fee. Um, there's a hike up to Mount Norman, which has magnificent views up there if you're into a nice hike. Um, there's crabbing there in the harbor. And if, uh, if you're into um, into spas or anything like that. There's Poets Cove nearby. Yeah. Uh, they have a restaurant and I think a pub or something like that. And speaking of pubs, it's a it's a quick little dinghy ride from there over to Port Browning uh, through the cut between in the Pender Canal between North and South Pender, and you can go over to the pub at um, Port Browning Port Marina. Browning Marina. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's overall good good uh, weather protection there as well. Yeah, it's, um, it's it's fairly good. It's good holding. Yeah, excellent holding. Never mm -hmm. had any any problem with dragging or anything there. Not too deep. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely one of our favorites. I think from Sydney, it's maybe from the harbor all the way out all the way out to Bedwell Harbor is maybe about ten nautical miles. So, mm -hmm. you know, a twenty mile round trip, easily done for a weekend trip yeah. from Sydney. Now the only uh, I want to say. One thing we experienced there one time was the, there was a weather, uh, like a wind pattern that kind of funneled over the mountain, remember? We were anchored. Yeah, funny, it was... funny enough, it, uh, um, when you look at the direction of the island on, on the map, and we had really strong north winds one weekend, and we might have seen it more than once, but at part of the anchorage, uh, probably a little closer to Poets Cove, uh, there's a there's kind of a bit of a saddle on the on the mountain there on uh, South Pender. Now what can happen is that wind can rush over the top and I think it creates a bit of low pressure and comes down the mountain and right into the anchorage and blows right out. You would think you're completely covered from the wind there, but there's kind of a funny little thing that happens um, in front of that saddle. If you tuck in as far as you can before it starts shallowing out over towards Beaumont Marine Park that's out of that wind and it gets the best protection over there. Mm -hmm. If you're kind of in between uh, the resort and Beaumont right in the middle there, you can experience some um, north winds if they're really strong coming over the mountain. And yet, I want to say, you would typically think you'd be uh, well protected from a northerly in that anchorage. Yeah, 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 you would, you, you would, you kind of wouldn't imagine it. But that is something that I think does happen in, mm -hmm. in that type of geography, yeah. um, not just exclusive to there, but yeah. pretty well anywhere. But uh, yeah, it was a little bit of a surprise for us at one point. But yeah. uh, nevertheless, definitely one of our favorite go-to anchorages. Yeah. And for those of you that come from the U.S., uh, right there at Poets Cove is the customs dock. Yeah, customs um, check-in so, there yeah. makes it really easy if yeah. you're not. Uh, if you're not using the call-in or anything like that, if you have to go to the actual actual mm -hmm. custom stock, you can you can uh, enter the country there. So yeah, yeah it's a good spot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Our next anchorage is Montagu Harbor. Uh, Montagu Harbor for us is probably close to a two hour run from Sydney. You know, not quite as far as Wallace, but it is still a fair run. And we generally will almost leave that for a long weekend, I would say too. Yeah. And uh, um, now with Montagu Harbor, it's a huge harbor. You can get easily 100. I think they've even seen 150 boats in that harbor. Before. Yeah. Uh, so it's very accommodating. Um, as far as exposure, if you're getting winds from the southeast, then you can either go on the east side of the harbor or you can go on the other side of the peninsula there um, to the north side of the park. Um, and that's very protected and it's a good spot. So there's lots of uh, mooring balls, parks mooring balls there in the Montagu Harbor. Uh, there's a, a dock um, that will accommodate boats up to six meters, I believe it is. Yeah, six meters, and I think they charge um, about $3 a, uh, $3 a meter. Yeah. So it's, it's fairly reasonable. Yeah, and part of that dock is also a dinghy dock, so if you're anchored out or at one in the morning balls, you can just take your dinghy over to the dock or go to the beach. There's lots of camping, walk-in campsites, uh, car campsites. An excellent trail around Great Peninsula. Yep. Um, Beautiful beach on the north side, which is great for sunset. Overall, it's, uh, I think, I think. well, it's actually one of the oldest, I think it is the oldest marine park in BC. 
and uh, it's a great spot. If you haven't been there before, highly recommend going. Yeah. And I think that is, that's definitely one of our top anchorages in the Gulf Islands. Yeah. I don't know if they still have it, but they used to have a, a, like an old school bus called the Hummingbird Pub Bus, and it would pick you up just outside of the park entrance and you could get a ride to the Hummingbird Pub on Galliano Island. And at that time when we went, it was free. You'd get a ride to the pub, have your dinner, and then get a ride back to the park and you'd get dropped off outside the park entrance. So. Yeah, real experience and a real highlight. Yeah. So definitely extra points for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So our last anchorage we're going to talk about is Todd Inlet. Todd Inlet, uh, for us, uh, I don't know how many miles it is, but it takes it's us about a, 12, about 12, 13 miles yeah. from from uh, Sydney to Todd Inlet. So for us, you know, the speed we cruise at, it's close to about two hours to get there from Sydney down into Todd Inlet, and um, because I want to say it's a more of a, a longer cruise time than we would normally like to go on for a normal weekend. Traditionally, we save Todd Inlet for long weekends just to make it worth the trip down there. And late fall, early spring after work, we're running into uh, challenges to get there before dark. So, yeah. um, you know, in, in, in summer season, it doesn't matter too much because it's late so late. But, uh, but, you know, just because, you know, it is a little bit further away, we do usually reserve that one for a long weekend. Uh, so one of the nice things with Todd Inlet is it's pretty much a good all-weather anchorage. Yeah, the wind, sometimes the wind can whistle through there, but it does have good holding. It's relatively shallow, so it's a fairly easy place to anchor. Yeah. Lots of uh, areas to stern tie. You can actually fit quite a few boats in yeah. a fairly small area, but you're never going to really get any real waves in there. No. Uh, so, you know, even though the wind could pick up, you could get some little, uh, some brisk, short little spurts of wind, or you could even get a fair bit of wind, but mm. it's it's not going to amount to any waves. No. But it's a great place to kayak, to paddleboard. There's tons of shoreline to explore. Yep. Um, There's a good park there with trails. Yeah, you're close to Butchard Gardens, and Butchard Gardens has a dinghy dock that you can take your dinghy over to and then go you know, into the gardens. And of course, pay to get into the gardens, but go for a walk around the gardens. And what else about Todd Inland? Well, they'll probably have fireworks starting again this year. So yeah. they have a great fireworks show on Saturday night. And if you're anchored in the canal, which they anchor in the canal, that can be a little bit crazy on fireworks night. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there has been, there has been uh, some wild times with some boats in there and uh, even some unfortunate events that have yeah. resulted from and it. And you don't see, they have a lot of fireworks that are on the ground which of course you don't see from the water, but you see more of the ones that are higher up yeah. uh, from the boats, which is kind of neat because it's just the, the sound echoing through the inlet. It's just like these big explosions or whatever, yeah, which yeah, sounds really neat. It's pretty spectacular, yeah. and, and the price is right for that show. So that's right. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, it's pretty good. Uh, but you know, if you're anchoring in the canal, you got to be careful in, uh, because the winds are can sort of come down through there a little bit, and you're you're always going to be broadside to the wind pretty much. Yeah. So, and you know, it, not with this boat, but with other boats, we have actually drug when we've. Um, been hit from the, a side wind there so you know it's good to kind of um, you know kind of think about that and uh, you know sort of to watch your position if it's a little a little bit windy yeah because typically typically in the canal you should be stern tying just because there isn't much room to swing with, yeah. especially fireworks nights there's so many boats that are in there and a lot of people just come for the fireworks and then they leave afterwards so they try and pack as many as they can into there. Yeah, yeah. So overall, definitely one of our favorite anchorages in the Gulf Islands. Yeah. So for a bonus anchorage uh, is Wallace Island. Um, the reason why is it's not really, I guess, southern Gulf Islands, not really northern Gulf Islands. For us, it's kind of, I guess, the halfway point. It is a favorite anchorage of ours. We really enjoy going there. But for a typical two-day weekend, it's uh, quite a long run for us from Sydney. So if we have a long weekend and the conditions are good, nice weather, that is probably one of our favorite places to go. Yeah, with it taking about at least three hours or so to get there, it is definitely a long, uh, a long run for us. There are two really nice anchorages there. Uh, the first is Conover Cove. It's a little bit small for larger boats and for sailboats because of a fairly shallow bay in there. And then on the other side of, on the north side of Conover, there's another called Princess Cove. And that one is much more suitable for larger vessels and sailboats. And it can, it can accommodate quite a few more boats than Conover Cove. Yeah, and both anchorages have um, 
the stern ties on the rocks, so with, uh, some of them have chains coming down, so that makes it easy for stern tying. And there's lots of trails throughout the island, right from north to south, uh, so you can get lots of hiking in on the island. There's lots of uh, heritage stuff on the island to look at. Wallace Island has a rich history um, uh, with the uh, Conovers who moved up from Los Angeles and started a resort in the early 40, early 1940s. And uh, there's a book uh, referred to as uh, Once Upon an Island. If you can find it, it is out of print, I believe, but if you can find a copy of it, it's a great story and it, uh, it really gives a lot of description to what you see on that island. Yeah, it's a great place. Um, if you have the time, really recommend stopping in. Yeah, it's a great anchorage. We really hope you enjoyed our favorite anchorages in the Southern Gulf Islands. And we'd like to hear what your favorite anchorages are, so feel free to leave a comment below. Let us know if maybe some of your favorites are the same as ours, or maybe you have some different ones. We'd like to hear. Thank you for watching.